dear Father, we come before your holy throne of grace this morning. We seek you out, Lord God. We want to seek you more because we want to know you more. And as we know you more, we know that we will fall in love with you more. Lord, this morning we will talk about one of the most delicate topics in life. And it's my prayer that you will just give us wisdom to understand this. Help us, Lord God, by your Holy Spirit to um, understand the full meaning of our lives and help us to remember that we need to value it because it is a gift from you. Father, we pray that you will just bless our discussion now. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm, blessed morning to everyone. Um, especially to my brother sister and sisters in Christ now today I would like to speak about uh, one of the topics which perhaps most of the people do not want to uh, deal with or to talk about you know, and that is suicide you know, um, I decided to discuss about this because um, I have already known so many young people um, committing suicide and I think if you have been listening to the news um, even before the coronavirus there have already been many cases about suicide and before <clears throat> suicide was just committed by uh, teenagers who were confused and who did not know what to do but later on, there were cases already of senior citizens committing suicide, you know? And <clears throat> um, what could really be the cause why people decide to end their lives that way? So, uh, let's try to, to um, go into the reasons that uh, could possibly have pushed these people to to commit suicide and um, because these reasons are really existing no na, na e experience natin itong lahat so uh, I have really decided to uh, do this video so that we can in one way on, or another um, eyes of people can be opened up to the reality of life so <clears throat> suicide what is suicide this is uh, related with the intolerability of some concern which is causing so much suffering for somebody no yung mga mga sitwasyon na hindi na makakaya ng ng isang tao no and what are we talking about uh, the trying times of life the problems the troubles of life and hindi ito magiging life kung wala tayo nito. No? So, uh, the question is, pagkatapos ng death, after death, has you are really suffering, uh, has really, has suffering really stopped? No? Natapos ba talaga yung, yung suffering mo? No? So, titingnan natin. So let's identify the trying times of life. You know, we have been through very trying times with the world and what do we feel when when we are in a trying trying time or a critical situation? The world seems to fall on us. You no, know? we get so depressed. There are even many people who uh, do not take a bath because of the depression, who do, who do not eat because they don't have the energy to eat and others go insane no? na they just uh, snap up and they go insane no? so there seems to be no solution to the problem there is a strong uh, temptation to end life to end suffering and to get away from it all so what are examples of these trying times let's try to, to check on this the first example of a trying time is financial bankruptcy so what are the causes of financial bankruptcy our needs it's piling up one after another and there is no adequate support to 
source to support these needs. And secondly, ailment. No? Somebody in the family gets sick. And you know, getting sick in the Philippines is really financially crippling. No? And then, third cause of financial bankruptcy is the loss of the breadwinner. The loss could be by death or it could be caused by the separation of the parents. And then fourth is wrong decisions. Um, when, we talk, when we talk about wrong decisions, it could be living a life that we cannot afford, no? and then sending our children to expensive schools, to private schools, even if we cannot afford. It could also mean buying expensive things beyond our capacity to pay and maintaining a standard of living higher than our financial coffers can afford. So these are caused by wrong decisions which would lead to financial bankruptcy. So the second um, the second uh, example of trying times in life, example of a cause of trying times in life, is emotional brokenness. And this is very uh, popular. You know? Now, emotional brokenness could be caused by a broken love life. You know? Ano ba ang mga uh, experiences ng mga tao relate, related to a broken love life. Yung partner mo, dry na. Or you, there is dryness or abandonment of a partner. Wala nang pag-ibig. No? At hindi mo matatanggap. No? Di ka na pinapansin. No? And then, uh, for married couples, the existence of a third party, you suddenly find out that your husband or your wife has another, another significant person already. No? So, may kabit na. No, meron ng iba. That is so painful, I think. No? And then, would you believe, unrequited love. Yung mga binabasted. Yung mga hindi sinasagot. No? They are also emotionally broken. No? They experience um, brokenness. And then, another uh, cause of emotional brokenness could be loss of a loved one no you the death of a of a husband the death of a wife or the death of a child no that would lead to emotional brokenness and then family problems no? family problems uh, the children would experience emotional brokenness when their family breaks no there is broken family their parents decide to separate no uh, akala siguro ng parents walang effect ito sa mga anak nila malaki ang effect nito no? and then they get confused about life they think that perhaps it's been their fault no? so especially when they are engaged when their parents are engaged in uh, verbal war and then they can hear that they are among the reasons no, of the problem in the family and then there is also <clears throat> among the family problems could be abuse by elders um, as far as the Philippines is concerned there is this is so uh, so so popular no it could be verbal abuse it could be uh, sexual abuse emotional abuse in other countries ano um ma ma preso ang parents no they will be um apprehended by the government but here in the philippines there is no such thing as that maybe but uh, bantay bata whatever no but um, the abuses in the family are not found out or are not known and uh, most especially if it involves sexual abuse there are fathers who abuse their uh, daughters sexually and that is uh, causing so much emotional brokenness to that daughter no? and then there is also sibling rivalry 
you know, sibling rivalry. Hindi mo, you cannot take uh, the, the presence of your sibling. You know? So, the yung naapektuhan, yung confused, rejected, homeless young person who cannot run away from the toxic environment of the home kasi natatakot. Resort to what? Resort to suicide. At hindi lang konti, marami na ang nangyayaring ganyan. No? And then, another cause for emotional brokenness is, would you believe, school matters. Yung they fail in a subject, no? and then when they fail and they tell their parents, uh, instead of listening to the reasons why they fail, pinapagalitan pa. No, there is lack of support from their parents. So yun, yun ang mga makikita kong emotional uh, uh, causes of emotional brokenness. Now aside from financial financial bankruptcy, emotional brokenness, the third uh, example of a trying time is physical ailment. No, yung ailment na life-threatening talaga. And what are these? No, cancer of all kinds. No, it is uh, pag sinabing cancer ay parang wala ka na talagang pag-asa. No, uh, marami dyan na nagre-remission din naman but after many years the cancer comes back. No, and then respiratory illnesses, yung mga t- example, yung chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. No? Di, di talaga magtatagal yan. No, pulmonary tuberculosis which is untreated. No, we have so many popular personalities in the Philippines who died of PTB, no, but uh, as of now it's really curable, but the problem is the persistence of the long-term um, treatment of the disease, no, which if you fail in this, I goodbye talaga. Asthma, hika, no. Um, alam nyo ba na marami ding namamatay sa hika yung mga sudden attacks no? and then aside from respiratory illnesses kidneys no? yung mga may sakit sa kidneys failing ang kidneys nila uh, nagninid ng dialysis no? uh, I am just my, my jaw drops when I think about the number of people who go to the hospital every week or two times a week or three times a week for dialysis no and then later on marami akong nakikita na they really um, deteriorate and die no so and heart diseases no may mga taong uh, life threatening talaga ang mga conditions of the heart now if you are hindi ka hindi strong ang stamina mo to withstand all this you will be committing suicide. I know of a of an old man who had cancer of the tongue and the esophagus. He committed suicide. He died before his time because uh, perhaps the pain was too much to bear. And yun, uh, wala na, na. He ended his life sooner. No, So all of these are examples of trying times that we people experience. Perhaps you can relate to one of them of the mentioned uh, problems that I uh, discussed, two or three, no? and uh, our coping mechanisms vary. No? Uh, there are people who have stronger coping mechanisms, they can carry on even when the problem is so um, big, and they still look at the brighter side of life. No? And these are the people who go through successfully. But for those with weaker coping mechanisms, some cannot overcome the trying times. No? There is withdrawal. Uh, some get insane. That's true. No? Yung, mga, yung iba is, uh, they go insane. They just snap. No? And then yung iba, they commit suicide. Yun nga. they end everything so that uh, they they end their lives so that all the problems in it will already stop now uh, there are important points that I want you to remember 
during these problematic times of us. Kasi habang buhay tayo, meron tig- talagang mga problema. Meron talagang mga concerns, mga issues, mga uh, mga hardships, mga trials, mga temptations. And we cannot do away with this. So, in this video, I would like to let me take you to important points with corresponding Bible verses which may encourage us to continue fighting the battle, moving on, climbing our mountains, hoping, persevering, enduring. No? So what are these important points that we should remember when things get tough in our lives? Number one, the temptation to give up is always there. Parang uh, meron talaga nangungulit na uh, you end up everything na. No? So, I would like to bring you to the book of Psalms chapter 13 verse verses 2 to 4. And it says, Psalm 13, 2 to 4, it says, How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart. How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer me, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say, I have overcome him. And my foes will rejoice when I fall. Take note. When we are burdened with problems, even when we are calling upon the Lord, you know, there is um, the temptation to sleep in death. Sino ba itong, who wrote this psalm? It was David. And David was run after by so many enemies that time. So that's why he said, How long will I wrestle with my thoughts? Day after day, have sorrow in my heart. Takot siya. You know, the fear in his heart was there. The anxiety was there overwhelming him. You know? That's why when he called upon the Lord, sabi niya, answer me na Lord. If you do not answer me, I will sleep in death. You know? There was this uh, temptation to, pag hindi mo ako sinagot, parang ganun. No? Uh, we are, when we are burdened with problems, there is always the temptation to give up. You know? And who is that one constantly whispering in our ears, telling us to give up. Sino yan? The devil, our enemy. No? Alam mo ba na uh, the enemy is, or the devil is like a roaring lion, just waiting for an opportunity to devour us. Naghihintay lang yan na if we will weaken a little bit, then he will uh, jump on us and devour us. Now, let's go to a cross-reference. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. It says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So what is meaning by, what is the meaning of sober? The most common meaning of sober or sobriety is you are not drunk. A person is not drunk. No, Like uh, when you are drunk, uh, sober down first before you drive. No? Sober also means sad and quiet or sometimes too serious. Another meaning of sober is to be logical or realistic about something. To be logical or realistic about, about something. So if there is an existing problem, we need to be logical and realistic to deal with it. No, hindi yung we will jump into a conclusion of ending our lives or something like that which is beyond calmness and beyond logic no so remember that aside from being a lion a roaring lion just waiting to devour us the devil is also uh, one who steals who kills and who wishes to destroy us no cross reference john chapter 10 verse 10 a the thief which is the devil comes only to steal and kill and destroy yes the devil comes to kill but you know what he lures us to do it on our own 
hindi he is not given the authority to take our lives no if you are familiar with the story about job no so it was god who permitted um, the devil to do things do bad things on job but he said do not take his life no so it means to say that everything that happens to us are permitted by god no for a purpose so the devil is not given the authority to take our lives but he tempts us so that we can do it on our own hindi na hindi na siya ang papatay sa atin tayo na mismo no if we succumb to his temptation we lose and he laughs in victory no tatawanan niya tayo then another um cross reference verse to this is James chapter 4 verse 7 it says submit yourselves therefore to God resist the devil and he will flee from you so every time we think about suicide about ending everything about surrendering we have to submit ourselves before the Lord no? to the Lord no, Lord no, please help me no, I am in so much trouble and I have no capacity to iron out this trouble please help me I need you please help me no? and if we are thinking thoughts about ending our lives tell it to the Lord Lord I have been thinking about suicide please clear my thoughts help me fill me with your Holy Spirit no so the temptation will always be there no uh, I have to uh, we, we have to be reminded that temptation itself is not a sin but once we succumb to it we commit sin no it's just like a bird flying over our head no it will never bother us unless we allow it to nest over on our head no that is the time that we will be bothered by it no? our second important reminder is let us realize who we are in god's eyes now uh, the first verse that i will share with you is first corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 it says do you not know that you are god's temple and that god's spirit dwells in you hmm. so our body is the temple of the holy spirit so but uh, bago yan mga kapatid let's just make one thing very clear here when can our bodies become the temple of god our bodies can only become the temple of, of god after we have invited lord jesus christ to be in our lives to be our personal savior and to be our lord so if you haven't done that in your life pause for a few moments and talk to god invite jesus into your life just tell him na lord jesus hindi ko naiintindihan ang sinasabi ng babaeng ito pero sabi niya i have to invite you in, into my life and that's what i'm gonna do now lord jesus come into my life be my personal savior and be my king so yan one of the major effects to this would be God would seal you with his Holy Spirit and his Holy Spirit will dwell in you forever thus making your body his temple um, please allow me to remind everyone watching that uh, destroying the temple of the Holy Spirit which is our body is not just committing suicide no we when we are on harmful vices or when we are living unhealthy lifestyles which are a threat to our health and to life we are also destroying the temple of God so what are these vices excessive drinking of alcohol no? so my sinasabi dyan na moderately drinking lang po ako pero how moderate is moderate ba no? isang galon ang moderate so uh, we'd better think twice about that smoking is also uh, destroying the temple of the holy spirit drugs unhealthy lifestyle yung uh, 
gising the whole night, going out, not sleeping adequately, and yung hindi kumakain ng balanced diet. No? Hindi, uh, uh, puro na lang meat or puro na lang harmful na mga intakes. Yun mga kapatid, no? these are also uh, ways by which we are destroying the temple of the Holy Spirit. The second verse that I would like to share with you is 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20. And it reads, For you were bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. No, baka nakalimutan natin, Jesus Christ died for us. No, Instead of us bearing the punishment of all our sins, sino ang nagbear ng punishment natin? Siya. No? So, He bought us with His precious blood. No? So, in an act of gratitude to what He did, let us glorify God in our bodies. Let's check on a cross-reference, which is Romans chapter 12, verse 1. It says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, therefore, meaning looking back to what Jesus di uh, did for everyone, no? Looking back to that, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, what is God's mercy? This is sending Jesus to us so that he can um, buy us with his precious blood. So in view of God's mercy, no? I urge you, brothers, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. So, what should we do as an act of gratitude to what Jesus did on the cross and to all the mercies of God for us? No Provision, protection, promotion. We should offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God because this is our true and proper worship. Yan. No? So, the third important point that I would like to share with you is God cares. We have to remember that God cares for us. So, the verses that are related to this, we have first, first Peter chapter 5 verse 7. Cast all your anxieties, cast all your cares on Him because He cares for you. No? So, ano ang instruction ng verse? Cast. No? Itugyan sa Bisaya or uh, ibigay. No? Ibigay sa Diyos. Ibigay sa Diyos ang mga cares natin, mga problems natin. And if we do not cast our cares to Him, He, he cannot manage our cares because you have not surrendered it to Him. No? And why should we uh, surrender everything to Him? Because He cares for us. No? He will definitely take care of our concerns. So, second, um, second verse, Psalm chapter 55, verse 22. It says, Cast your burden on the Lord, and He will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. No, so, uh, this is so much in connection with 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. No? Psalm 55, 22, cast your burden. His instruction is, when we cast our cares to the Lord, cast your cares to the Lord. No? Kasi, what are His promises? He will sustain us. He will not allow us to be moved. Yan. It's very clear in the word of God, mga kapatid, mga brothers and sisters, no? So, Matthew, another verse is Matthew eleven twenty eight. What does it say? Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. No? Ang instruction niya, halikay, halikayo. Yung mga problema ka doon dyan, yung mga nabibigatan dyan, halikayo sa akin. And what is his promise? And I will give you rest. Yan. No, it's so clear as broad daylight. No? So, another verse is um, Psalm 34 verses 17 to 20 and it says, When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. 
The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Mm, ang ganda. No? So, what is the instruction? What is God's instruction in these verses? Cry to me for help. No, when the righteous cry for help, you who are righteous, cry to me for help. But teka muna, are we righteous? No? Because the verse says, when the righteous cry for help. Mm. So, sino ba ang righteous? No? Are we righteous? Mga kapatid, by our own, we can never be righteous. No? Uh, we are so sinful. But when we invite Jesus to be our Lord and Savior, to come into our lives to be our Lord and Savior, and we believe this in our hearts, alam niyo ba, His righteousness will be imputed upon us. No? imputed upon us parang kinakover na chat tayo ni Lord no and he will we will be made righteous no anong mga verses ang cross references nito 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30 and because of him you are in Christ Jesus who became to us wisdom from God righteousness and sanctification and redemption yan another is Romans 4:5 and to the one who does not work but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteous. Mm. Tingnan mo. Just believe. He died for you. He died for us. Alam niyo ba mga kapatid kung ano ang, what, he, what he died for? Jesus Christ died for your present, your past, your present, and your future sins na ikukumit mo pa. No? Pero, uh, ayaw pagsalig. No? Do not say, ah, I will commit this because Jesus Christ died for, for this already. After you receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you are no longer uh, uh, what's this? You are no longer See, you wait, wait. You are no longer intentionally sinning, no. But you sin less, no. So, hindi mo na talaga uh, plina plano na you will commit sin, no. Pag may sin ka man, para bang it's just a mess. Bakit ko nasabi yun? Bakit ko nagawa yun? Ganun na lang, no. So, no more intention to commit sin. That's it. No? So, when things are bad with us, who do we call first? It should be God. No? Ang fault kasi natin mga kapatid is when things go wrong, we stand as the problem solver. No? We get solutions on our own. And we cannot find the right solutions because we are limited. We are so limited. We get frustrated. We, we are so limited. And yung mga solutions na ginagawa natin, are frustratingly failing, pumapalpak, no? And when we cannot find the right solutions because we are limited, we get frustrated and we commit suicide. Yun. Yun na nga. This is what you call as the ultimate bugso ng damdamin. No? Tama ba yun sa, ma sa Tagalog? <coughs> it, this is a very unwise thing to do because, alam nyo ba, death is a point of no return. No? We can no longer come back and say, uh, teka muna, hindi pala, hindi ko pala gustong mag-suicide, hindi ko pala hindi ko pa pala gustong mamatay no, you're already dead, you have already crossed the boundaries between life and death and it is a losing gamble with eternity mga kapatid, so I'd like to remind you that when things are bad, call unto the Lord immediately no, bakit? ano ang promise niya sa verse? no when the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears. No? And what does He do? He delivers you out of all your troubles. No? When you are broken hearted, you are crushed in spirit. Alam niyo ba? No? The Lord is near to you. No? To us. When we are broken hearted and crushed in spirit. No? 
marami ang mga afflictions natin na mga righteous. Pero kailangan isure mo na uh, you are counted as righteous by receiving Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord. No? So, marami ang afflictions natin. But, ano ang promise ni Lord? He will deliver you out of them all. Hindi, hindi isa lang. All. No? Sinabi sa verse dito sa Psalm 34, 17, 20, he, The Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones, not one of them is broken. No, So, this is such a beautiful promise. No? God cares so much for us. We have to remember that he that does not just deliver us from some, but from all troubles. No? And then, mga kapatid, another beautiful um, verse is Jeremiah 29.11. Maybe it's one of the first memory verses of Christians, no? What does this say? For I know the plans I have for you. Sinong may sabi nito? Declares the Lord. Plans for your welfare or plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Wow! Alam mo ba yan? No? So when times are hard, it is not for us to give up. In this verse, we should find assurance that whatever hard times you are undergoing, it shall soon pass. Because God promised, God said that He has a plan for us to prosper us, not to harm us. If we believe in God and we believe that He does not lie at all, does God lie? No. no? Then if we believe that He does not lie at all, we should carry on, we should cling to that hope of Him who has given us life. No? Mga kapatid. So, aside from Jeremiah 29, 11, ito. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 6. Still another very common verses. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make your paths straight. So, what is the instruction given in this verse? Trust in the Lord. No? With all your heart. Ano pa? Do not lean on your own understanding. So, do not solve your problem on your own. No? And then, ano pa? Acknowledge Him in all your ways. Iyan ang mga instructions sa verse na ito. Ano ang promise niya? He will make your paths straight. He will give you ways to solve your problems. No? Ang problema lang dyan, mga kapatid, is we hardly or we do not trust the Lord at all. Parang wala siya, wala lang siya. Maybe because we don't see Him. And uh, that is, that should, the fact that we cannot see Him should steer our faith in Him. Pero, pero yung, yung ang marami sa atin na Hindi na si steer ang faith, na si steer ang self confidence. Ay, I mean self reliance, no? So we do not acknowledge him, we do not trust in him. When hard time comes, we lean on our own understanding instead of obeying what he said. That do not lean on your own understanding. So we look for solutions to our problems. We use our limited resources of a brain to think of ways. And then, when we hit rock bottom, goodbye. No? Looking for a rope na, or looking for a gun. No? So, ganun. No? So, it's very uh, difficult if we do not trust in the Lord. So, another verses, other verses are Psalm 147, verse 3, He heals the brokenhearted, binds up their wounds. Psalm 138, verse 7, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. Yan. No, mga promises yan ni Lord sa book of life, the Bible. No? So, the fourth. Ano ba ang fourth na important reminder para sa ating lahat dito? No? Hope and a great reward awaits those who persevere so hope and a great reward awaits those who persevere 
the verses connected to this are the following. We have 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 to 9. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Ang sarap if we are living a life in the Lord. No matter what happens, we may be afflicted in many ways. Maraming problema. No? One problem after another piling up, but we will never be crushed. No? We are perplexed, we are confused, we are troubled, but we are never driven to despair. Despair na magbibigti na. No? We may be persecuted. Many people are... Uh, many people hate us, abuse us, and whatever. But God will never forsake us. We may be struck down. Parang from the worldly perspective, talo tayo. But you know what? We will never be destroyed. So that is God's promise in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 to 9. In Romans chapter 5, verses 2 to 8, it says, Through Him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope, in the hope of the glory of God. No, more than that, we rejoice. What is the hope of the glory of God? No, the glory of God is used in a variety of ways, mga kapatid, in the scripture. It can refer to God's greatness, His honor, His beauty, His power, His light. No, In every case, the glory of God acknowledges the Lord's supreme strength and our need to both acknowledge and serve Him. Now, as of now, we are already rejoicing as we enjoy the glory of God in each of our lives. Just thinking that He's taking care of us, that's so glorious already. No? But one day, this joy that we feel right now, no, we will actually, this will actually be intensified and magnified, made perfect when we actually come face to face with this mighty God, this awesome God that we worship. So, in Hebrews 10, verses 35 to 36, it says, Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. Just be confident kahit mahirap ang buhay. Let's be confident that God is getting us through all this. For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, which is to persevere, to endure, you may receive what is promised. Ang sarap talaga, mga kapatid. No? God is our ultimate solution. Wala nang iba. Siya lang. No? He provides everything for us. He takes care of us. He cares about us. No? But, ang fifth point na isha-share ko, parang nakakatakot ito, mga kapatid. No? We have to remember also, that God is never happy about suicide. Bakit? First, we take things in our hands. No? Anong sabi ng Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 17? Be not overly wicked, neither be a fool. Why should you die before your time? Yan ang sinabi ng, ng Ecclesiastes. It is not for us to decide when to end our lives, mga kapatid. It is for God to decide on this. No, if we do, uh, we we decide. We if we do so because we have been overwhelmed. But what by what uh, we are facing in life? It's either we have been overly wicked, or we have been a fool. Sabi yan ng verse. No, sabi ng verse. Be not overly wicked, neither be a fool. Why should you die before your time? So if you could decide to die before your time, it's either you are wicked, overly wicked, or you are a fool. So nakakatakot naman. Second, you, so yun first, no? Why God does not like suicide? We take things into our hands. It seems na hindi tayo nagtatrust sa kanya. Second, we are destroying his temple. 
No, remember, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So in First Corinthians chapter three, verse seventeen, it says, "If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him, for God's temple is holy, and you are that temple." Clear as broad daylight, mga kapatid. Third reason why God does not like suicide. We are committing murder. Exodus 20 verse 13. You shall not murder. This is a simple and an outright instruction to preserve life, whether your own or others. Whoever violates this instruction will face the wrath of God. So fourth reason why the Lord God does not like suicide. We have chosen death over life, curse over blessing. In Deuteronomy 30, verse 19, 19, it says, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offsprings, offspring may live. So it's very clear. If we choose life, there is blessing, not just for us, but for our heirs, our offsprings, mga anak, mga apo natin. But if we choose that, the curse that we get is not just for us, but also for everybody who is bringing our name in the future. So that's it. That's the fourth reason, mga kapatid why God does not like suicide. Fifth reason, we are courting God's wrathful judgment. In Hebrews 9, 27, it says, And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment. No? So marami ang nagtatanong, forgiven ba yun sila? And a commitment suicide that's not for us to say but for as long as there was a moment a brief moment of repentance just before life snapped out siguro no? it's only god who knows no it's only god who knows because the requirement kasi mga kapatid to be with the lord is repentance no importante. So, how can you repent if you killed yourself? Uh, yun na nga, yung sabi ko. Uh, the, the most crucial moment is the moment, no matter how brief of committing suicide and paglagot ng hininga. No? So, if during those, that moment nakapag-call upon the Lord ang tao, then maybe forgiven siya but it's not for me to say no it's only for god to say no so number 6 reason why god does not like it does not like suicide is we are emulating what judas iscariot has done no alam niyo ba yung first na nag suicide si judas so uh, no um, yeah no? during the time of jesus christ matthew 27 Verses 3 to 5, what does it say? No, he, he was not the first to commit suicide. No, there were many in the Old Testament who committed suicide. But then when Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple, he departed and he went and hanged himself. No? So if we commit suicide in whatever way, we are emulating the evil deed that Judas Iscariot has done. So to recap, brothers and sisters, the five important points that we need to remember when things get so difficult, no, parang we are so broken, our, our problem is so heavy to bear. Just remember these following things. 
the temptation to give up will always be there. Kaya, huwag, mag, huwag magpatalo sa evil one. Sabihin mo, get thee behind me, Satan. I don't belong to you. I belong to God. Second point is, let's realize who we are in God's eyes. And who are we? We are His temple. For as long as you receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you have become His temple. Number three reason, important uh, thing to be reminded of, God cares. God cares for us. God cares for me. God cares for you, for everybody. No? And then fourth reason, there is hope and there is a great reward awaiting for us who will persevere. No? And then yung nakakatakot, God is never happy about suicide. So would you like us? Uh, would you like God? not to be happy about you of course we don't we don't like no we want to please god in everything that we do what does the bible say in the book of corinthians no in everything you do whether you eat or you drink do it all for the glory of god how can god be glorified when you commit suicide so hindi talaga so my dear brothers and sisters as we face the many trying times of life Remember, financial bankruptcy, emotional brokenness, ano pa yung isa, mga ailments, ano pa yung upa, iba, iba mga, uh, mga causes why we feel so down, no? we feel so problematic. We should always remember that we should never give in to temptation. No? And we should always take care of our bodies because this is the temple of God. We should always remember that God cares for us. We should look beyond kung natatabunan ka na ng mga problema ngayon. We should have the capacity to look beyond the present circumstance, mga kapatid. No? Because there is a promise of a great reward for those who push through, for those who move on, for those who persevere, persist, endure. No? And then finally, do not even think about suicide. Do not even think about suicide. Because God does not like it. Oh. So, I hope that um, things have been clear to us. Um, I, uh, I have been pushed to, to do this video because of the many things happening around me here. And perhaps with you also, wherever you are. And many young people are deciding so drastically to kill themselves, no? Just because of the simple reason of whatever, no? So we do not know. Uh, we do not know their reasons except when they leave suicide notes. But sayang ang buhay, mga kapatid. So... Um, I hope that uh, this video has given us some light no, on how to deal with our current trying times. Thank you so much for being with me and God bless us all. Let's pray. Dear Father, we just want to glorify you. We want to honor you with everything we do, whether we eat, we drink. We want to glorify you, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for your message for us uh, today. And I know in my heart, Lord God, that you have caused me to, to um, discuss this topic, Lord God. Many things have been happening. And I know that you want to remind people that you are there. Thank you, Lord, that you are always there to take care of us. Sometimes we cannot feel it. We, we, we do not know it uh, the answer is a bit late but ultimately when we just wait upon you you take care of us and thank you so much Lord God thank you for being so patient with us and thank you very much for loving us for taking care of us for protecting us for providing for us and for promoting us we know that we haven't 
we are no longer the persons that we were before, but we, you have elevated us to a higher level, Lord God, in our worship to you. Lord, we just want to thank you. Everything that we have and we are now are because of you. And we pray that you will just give us the grace to continue, Lord God, with our desire to really be intimate with you, to really pray to you, to really read your word so that we will be guided in our lives. All this we pray in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, your Son, whom you sent to die for us on the cross. And everybody say, Amen and Amen.